In general, I've always liked building costumes, and over the years I've built some cool ones. But something that I've always wanted to do is build my very own protogen fursuit from scratch. Hi, I'm Waffles, and building a protogen sounds really difficult, but in theory should be possible. Now, there's some incredibly cool protogen fursuits out there, but honestly, I don't really care about any of those. Instead, I just want to see what the coolest protogen fursuit is that we can build together. All we need to do is get some plastic for the head, some fur for the body, and some electronics for the brain. But there's only one problem. I've never built a protogen fursuit before, and I'm not even quite sure what the best way to do it is. But anyways, to get started, the first thing that we need to do is create the head for our protogen. We're going to use a head base kit that once assembled will act as the foundation for our fursuit head. We're using a 3D printed kit by Kyborg Studios, and these parts come raw from the printers. Our first real task is going to be cleaning them up and getting them ready to put together. Starting things off, we can go ahead and remove the extra scaffolding material used during the printing process that we no longer use. This material is just used to support the piece as it's printed and it just isn't needed anymore. Next, we can go ahead and test fit our pieces together to get a better idea of what we're working with. I find adding arrows to my parts makes it a lot easier to keep track of things as we go ahead and assemble it all together. The goal right now is to clean up and smooth out our plastic pieces, making sure that they fit together flush. The more sanding we can do now, the easier things will be when we put it all together. The way this kit works is that each piece is glued together using metal connecting pins. But before we can add our pins, we first need to drill out the plastic holes that they will go in. So now that we've gotten everything sanded down and drilled out, we can talk about finally starting put, to put together these pieces. And with that, we've come across our first problem. The instructions say that we should put pins in all of these holes here and then just kind of slot it together. But as you can see, this is basically impossible. The first two holes are kind of aligned, but the rest of them get out of sync really quickly and it's just not gonna happen. But nonetheless, we still have a strategy and I think that's just called gluing the absolute crap out of it. So. Let's go ahead, tack these guys together with some super glue, and then from there, we kind of reevaluate making this stronger and hopefully just kind of getting everything fit together. After trying several different brands of glue, I eventually settled on a brand called Starbond. It's insanely strong. Now, using this new glue, we can go ahead and attach the first two pieces of our head together. It's important to go slow and make sure everything's aligned correctly before the glue dries, because these first two pieces are gonna act as the foundation of our fursuit head. After the glue is dried, we once again go ahead and give everything a good sanding down. Remember, we want these pieces to go together as flush and as smooth as possible, so spending this a little bit of extra time sanding is going to make all the difference. Now, we can focus on attaching the next piece of the head by drilling out the remaining holes that we need for the pins. Luckily for us, the remaining parts did have all their holes aligned, and it was a lot easier to put together. In order to attach each piece, we first needed to drill out the pilot holes, sand everything down, and then finally pin it in place. I found it a lot easier to go one piece at a time and only gluing it in a few pegs at once. The most important part here is to go slow and make sure everything is aligned flush before letting the glue dry. Now that we've gotten the head glued together, we can go ahead and attach the jaw. Adding it now will really help lock down the geometry of the head. Next, we can add one of my favorite pieces and that's the little wings on the side of the head. They're one of my favorite parts to add because they just clicked right on and they start to make our head really look like a protogen. Now that we have our kit assembled, we can go ahead and give everything a generous second coat of glue. At this point, the head is really starting to feel sturdy. For the most part, everything went together smooth, but there are still a few places where things could be improved. So, as you suspect, another round of sanding is required. It just ends up making the final product look so much better and it's good for the soul. You can see the difference between the two pieces before and after, and it really does make a difference. Spending a little bit extra time on these little details adds up in the long run and makes your final product look a lot better. The next thing that we need to do to finish is to cut out the holes on the side of the head. Eventually, they'll be replaced with clear plastic with LED lighting behind them. Sometimes in life, you need a messy solution to solve a problem. Here, the plastic is soft, but I'm using a grinding drill bit to chew through the plastic to create a hole. There's almost certainly a more elegant solution out there, but when all you have is a hammer, every problem looks like a nail. 
Once the majority of the material is removed, we can go ahead and use sandpaper and files to clean up the edges of our holes. Now that we've finished all the cutting and gluing and sanding for now, we can go ahead and give everything a good coat of primer. If you've ever painted on plastic before, you'll know just how notoriously difficult it is to paint. Using a good primer is a requirement if you want things to look good later down the road. Primer also makes it a lot easier to spot mistakes you've made anywhere on the sanding from before. Ooh, check it out, YouTube chat. I'm pretty satisfied with how this is turning out, and you can see it's looking a lot better now that it's primed. Now, there are a few more things that I want to get done before we can call this head frame complete. And the first thing is fixing these lines here. I thought we could just sand it out and it would look nice and flush, but I'm not satisfied with that. I still think it looks kind of goofy. I'm gonna go ahead and use Bondo, which I've never used before, to fill in all these gaps. I might even put a little bit up here too, but that should give us a nice smooth helmet to make this thing feel like one unified piece as opposed to a bunch of random pieces stuck together with some glue. So with all that work done, we can officially call the frame for our projection head done. I know a lot of work went into it, but this piece is gonna act as the frame or base work for everything else going forward. I really wanted to spend some time on it. If you're interested in seeing the rest of this fursuit be finished, go ahead and hit subscribe. It's really fun to go on an adventure together where we kind of build a fursuit from scratch, and I can't wait to see kind of the next couple steps for this projection head. And if you're interested in fursuit making, there is a Telegram group chat where that has some really cool people in it and some great information that you can join in the link below too. Thank you, and I can't wait to see you guys again soon.